This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Today we're going to look at what seems to be one of the internet's favorite types of functions and that is the infinite power tower. We're going to look at maybe not the most general such infinite power tower but a fairly general one built out of a single function and that single function is arbitrary and we're going to find its derivative. And so in particular, let's say g of x is equal to this power tower built out of the function f of x. So it's f of x to the f of x to the f of x, so on and so forth. Like I said, our goal is to find the derivative. But maybe a bigger question, which we won't really ease our way into today, is when does this sort of object make sense? So as you might imagine, this sort of object will get very, 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 very big if the output of the function is even a little bit larger than one. So I think this is maybe a really important question here, but we're gonna keep this video a little lighter and just like play with maybe a quick and dirty technique that you might use to find this sort of derivative. Okay, so the first thing that I'd like to do is introduce a sequence of functions. So let's define this recursively defined sequence of functions like this. Let's say g sub zero of x is equal to f of x. And then g sub n of x is equal to f of x to the power g n minus one of x. Okay, so under this setup, we have, well, exactly what we want. So we'll see that the limit as n goes to infinity of g sub n of x is precisely g of x. That's maybe the proper way of defining this infinite power tower in the first place, of this limit of the sequence of nesting exponentiations. So maybe instead of using this recursion, I'll use the recursion which is shifted a little bit, g n plus one of x equals f of x to the g n x. And what we'd like to do is calculate the derivative here. But in order to calculate this derivative, we'll use something called logarithmic differentiation. That's the general strategy when you have variables both in the base and the exponent, which we do here. So let's take the log of both sides. That'll give us the natural log of g n plus one of x equals g n x times the natural log of f of x. So something like that. And now let's take the derivative of both sides of this. And we're totally allowed to take the derivative of both sides because with this setup, we have a finite power tower. Okay, so that's gonna give us g n plus one prime of x over g n plus one of x. That's by, you know, the chain rule. And then over there, we have to use both the chain rule as well as the product rule. So that's gonna give us g n prime of x times the natural log of f of x plus g n of x times f prime of x over f of x. But now that gives me this nice formula for g n plus one prime of x. And so distributing this g n plus one through will leave me with g n plus one of x times g n prime of x times the natural log of f of x plus, now we'll have g n of x times g n plus one of x, and then we have f prime of x over f of x. So that's where we're at at the moment. And now what I'll do is I'll apply the limit to all parts of this. And maybe this is a bit of a pop quiz opportunity. So if we apply the limit to all parts of this, we're making some sort of implicit solution about the convergence properties here. Maybe post in the comments what assumption we're exactly making here. Okay, so taking this limit, we'll end up with g prime of x equals, so this will be g of x, and then this will be g prime of x. We'll have this natural log of f of x, 
and then plus each of these will be a g of x, so that's g of x squared, and then we have f prime of x over f of x. So check it out, we've got this nice equation that we can solve for g prime, and that's exactly what we'll do. Before we continue, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a service that takes the hassle out of creating a website. You don't have to be a programmer to have a beautiful, responsive, and feature-rich website. Because of their support, we are able to do what we love. With Squarespace, you too can focus on what you love and leave the technical stuff to them. With simple drag and drop actions, access to the code if you need it, and domain services that help you get your site online quickly. I use Squarespace for my own website and I find it easy to use with plenty of integrations. They even have a plugin for LaTeX. It allows me to include equations on my website very easily. Whether you need a place to sell your wares or to show your art, Squarespace has the tools that you need to keep your website modern and easy to use. Use. Give Squarespace a try by going to squarespace.com slash Michael Penn to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using code Michael Penn. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video that we are now returning to. This is where we ended up on the last board and now I'm going to do a bit of simplification before we start to solve for G prime. And I'm going to use logarithm rules to bring this G inside of this natural log. So let's see, that's gonna make this thing look like g prime of x times the natural log of f of x to the power g of x. Okay, but now let's look over here and notice that if you look at the exponent of the first f of x, you have an infinite power tower of f of x's. So that means that g of x is inside of itself like this. In fact, we essentially have this kind of like functional equation for g of x. We have g of x equals f of x to the power g of x. So now using this, we will replace this f of x to the g of x with simply g of x. So now let's bring that down just for simplicity. We have g prime of x, natural log of g of x, and then plus g of x quantity squared, f prime of x over f of x. Now we can move some things around and then divide and what you'll see is we end up with g prime of x equals the following object. So it'll be g of x quantity squared times f prime of x over f of x times one minus the natural log of g of x. So notice we get this one minus natural log of g of x from subtracting this over, factoring the g prime out, and then everything else comes from this term right here. Okay, so this would be our final solution. And now let's look at a special case of this. So I think maybe the special case will be the case when f of x equals x. That's maybe one of the most classic power towers because in this case, we have g of x is equal to x to the x to the x to the x to the x. You know, like I said, this is one that's seen a lot of different places. Well, at least on the internet. In this case, what do we end up with? Well, we'll end up with g prime of x is equal to g of x squared. So let's write x to the x to the x to the x, so on and so forth squared times the derivative of x, which is just one, over x times one minus the natural log of this infinite power tower. Okay, and then maybe if we really wanted to, we could rewrite this g prime as the derivative with respect to x of this infinite power tower. And then we've like essentially maybe breaking a lot of rules, or maybe not breaking a lot of rules, but bending a lot of rules and not being super careful, we've come up with a derivative formula for this infinite power tower. And that's a good place to stop. 
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.